Another episode of the weekly news on the For the Property Investor podcast. And of course, it wouldn't be um, a weekly news segment without the Nick Bindle. Well, it's great to be here uh, with none other than the Owen Davis. Yes, thank you very much, Nick. It's, um, well, you know, we're here every week to deliver the news about what's happening in the market. And um, but, but what's been happening in your week um, other than the news? My business, Hunter and Scribe, we're a copywriting agency that writes content for finance and property uh, professionals throughout Australia. And one of the segments we work with is buyer's agents. We love buyer's agents. We work with a lot of buyer's agents. And just to give you an example, over the past week, we've helped several different buyer's agents with website content, social media posts, blogs and media releases. And, and that's a pretty standard week for us. Fantastic. Good to hear. It's um, And of course, they're all people that we love to talk to as well here. But uh, uh, in the past week, we've been talking to people all over the country Harvey Bay in Queensland, yeah. um, as well as Brisbane. Yeah, Brisbane's always there. It's, um, but of course, Townsville as well. That's um, still keeping active. Um, where else? We've been looking at um, Hunter Valley in in New South Wales. That's still a, a very active area. Um, and um, Perth, there's been a lot of talk about Perth. Um, and um, some people suggesting that uh, they might be looking at Melbourne next. Um, but, um, yeah, that might be a story for in a month or two uh, if things start happening. So you never know. Very interesting. And that actually ties in with the first of three news stories we've got. Oh, and just really? a bit of uh, moving into the news, I'd like to maybe set a challenge, which is, Every time you say the words supply and demand, I think both of us need to take a drink. Right. What are we drinking? Uh, water, schnapps, I don't know. A shot of okay. something. All right. Well, I suppose it's midday somewhere in the world, so. Okay. Well, well let's fire up then uh, with the first story. Home building approval numbers falling. There's been much talk about the need to increase Australia's housing supply, but the data suggests a problem may get worse before it gets better. The number of dwellings approved for construction in June was 3.7% lower than the year before, according to the latest data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. But the problem looks more serious when you zoom out. That's because while 1,113,000 home building approvals were issued in the five years to June 2019, only 936,000 were issued in the five years to June 2024. That's a 16% reduction between June 2019 and June 2024, even though the national population increased by about 2 million people during that time. I mean, I know we've spoken about this before, but love to get your thoughts again. Why do you think home building approvals numbers have been going backwards, even though our population has been increasing? Yeah, that's a very good question. And um, I'm probably the um, um, wrong person to be asking that to, um, uh, in terms of trying to hold someone to account as to the reason. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm still looking at these figures here that you just read out. And it's just like, it's mind, bog mind boggling as to the fact that th this is the simple reason as to why we have this housing crisis. Um, and yeah, with the increased population and the decrease in the number of um, you know, home building approvals, it's just mind boggling um, that people think it's anything other than this issue. So, um, but in terms of, yeah, it, it's um, it's crazy. So, uh, but to answer your question, why do you think home building approval numbers have been going backwards? It's it's simple government red tape, um, as well as um, finance issues. Banks got very nervous with um, um, you know, approving uh, developments. Um, and so a lot of builders and developers moved away from high density 
uh, uh, developments themselves because it was hard to get finance. It was harder to get them approved. It would take longer. Uh, yes, there was some issues that caused that in terms of, uh, you know, we, we all know about the, the unit blocks in Sydney that, um, you know, were, were starting to fall down and had um, major issues. Um, and then there was all of the compliance issues that needed to be done on the existing uh, buildings out there with uh, the fire cladding issues. So um, all of those things added up to moving away from those high density developments and finance being very difficult to be able to get for them in, in the first place. So it's um, when we've got this population issue, um, population increase issue, you know, it, it, it's just made a, a bad problem worse. Well, you, you mentioned the population increase. So that means demand is going up and we also need supply to go up with demand. So what can we do to increase the number of home building approvals and therefore the number of dwelling completions? Uh, well, the first thing is, is I mean, government has the, the utmost control over this situation um, where they can release more land. Um, and, and this is all levels of government. It's not just federal government or state. It's, it's local as well. Um, so it's all three levels of government working together to get more housing approvals um, through. So it's um, ultimately that's where the control lies. Well, well, this first news story leads on very nicely to our second news story, which is something different. And I'll be very, very keen to hear your thoughts. Human rights expert calls for rethink of housing policy. Quote, almost everyone in Australia is feeling the impact of the national housing crisis which is traumatising individuals, families and communities, argues Kevin Bell in his new book, Housing, the Great Australian Right. Bell, who was formerly a judge and is an expert on human rights law, says that while in the post-war period, quote, governments ensured that access to adequate and affordable housing was virtually universal, now many young people are finding it, quote, almost impossible to buy a home. However, Bell says governments have the power to solve this problem. Quote, the first step is for Australia to rethink its approach to housing policy and recognise access to housing, having a home, as a fundamental human right. The current crisis can be traced back to when growing the property market and treating housing as an investment became the dominant considerations, with the welfare of people relegated to a distant second. This order must now be reversed beginning with making the human right to housing the central focus of the system. This will require profound changes to government policy, administration and legislation to be fueled by reimagining the great Australian dream of housing as the great Australian right to housing. Owen, Bell says many young people are finding it, quote, almost impossible to buy a home. Is he exaggerating or is that a fair assessment? I don't think he's exaggerating and in with that statement um the rest of his statement seems um um very fluffy <laughs> um and out of touch with how to actually solve the problem um he's looking at it from a very philosophical point of view um and without necessarily understanding the, the basic economic levers to make things work. Uh, what he was re what he was referring to in, um, in in terms of times gone by of how governments made a priority is is probably absolutely correct. But what governments of those times did was make sure there was enough supply of new housing, which made everything more affordable as a result. So you do that one basic thing of providing supply in the market, everything will become more affordable. Mm, supply and demand. And Kevin Bell, who is a human rights expert, as I mentioned, 
is arguing that housing should be a human right. Do you, do you agree with that? Um, well, well, I don't disagree with it in, in principle. And but what does he mean by that? Uh, it's like because uh, a lot of people will will take that in many different ways. It's just like, do we want to make sure that we we uh, are doing everything we can to to um, rid our society of homelessness? Yes. Uh, do we want to um, make sure that everyone has a fair chance to be able to have uh, to be able to live where they want to live? And so it's like, yes. Um, but do we want to make it a a minimum standard where people get issued with their own home when they reach a certain age? No. Mm. Um, so it, it's um, because that's that's how some people take that statement as housing should be a human right, where they basically get issued a a property for free to live in um, or at a at a nominal rate. And it's just like, well, no, that's not how society works. It's not how, how an economy works. Um, and because everything becomes, will boil down to that lowest common denominator then. So, uh, yes, there's, there's a, a lot of, um, it, it's a loaded statement is, uh, I guess, to sum it up by saying that housing should be a human right. Okay, okay. Let, me let me run, run another run. of Bell's arguments by you. He says housing has become a financial asset first and somewhere to live second and believes government should shift this order and place people first. Is he right? Um, well, I don't think that statement is, is a bad statement. And it's, and yeah, you know, everyone would like to think that housing would be considered um, a uh, somewhere to live first and a financial asset second, um, but they can be both. It, it's housing, uh, uh, the housing market is a, is a financial market. And to be able to, and we need to keep it a financial asset to be able to help provide more supply, which will help bring down the cost of housing. So in 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 the short term and and long term. So it's it's something that um, yes, it needs to be able to grow over time, and it's it's an asset that even if you uh, even if it just grew at the rate of inflation and you paid it off over time, that it's a very good tool as a savings tool, as an, as an mm. asset accumulation tool. So the issue is where a lot of people have used it to be able to speculate on high capital growth. and and yes, made money from that as a result. Um, but you know, it's it's been fueled by historically low interest rates that were brought about in a time where it wasn't really required. Um, it was a a false economy, and and it resulted in. Uh, this housing boom, or the housing market boom, to be uh, more accurate. It's interesting because a lot of these problems could be solved, going back to supply and demand, by a lot of new homes being built. If a lot of new homes are being built, that immediately addresses affordability concerns both for buyers and tenants. Yes, it's it's the one thing you go back to the previous story we sh we saw the uh we with, with the the difference between the previous 5 years and the last 5 years of of population growth and 
the the shortage of housing approvals. That's the problem in a nutshell. It's the only problem that needs to be fixed. And we wouldn't even be talking about housing should be a human right and we need to fix the problem. Um, yeah, they're, 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 this is where this uh, former judge is it um, is is trying to make it a philosophical issue rather than a basic economics issue. Well, our final story today, Owen, is a little bit lighter and I'm going to put you under the pump and ask you some hard questions. <laughs> Property investors eyeing up Queensland. Property investors believe Queensland has the best investment prospects according to the latest quarterly survey from Australian Property Investor magazine. Of the investors surveyed, 33% said Queensland had the best investment prospects over the next year. 26% said New South Wales, 16% Western Australia, 9% Victoria, 8% South Australia, 3% the ACT, 3% the Northern Territory, and 2% Tasmania. Owen, oh, okay, um, I'm going to ask you the hard questions. If you had to pick a state or territory to invest in right now, which one would you choose? Um, yeah, the, the top, top two are probably uh, on the mark. So... If you had to yeah, pick just uh, Queen, one. yeah, definitely um, um, Queensland from a affordability point of view and a a rental yield point of view is uh, definitely on the mark. But um, yeah, where in Queensland? Yeah, Queensland is a big state, mm. and uh, that that's that's another question. Uh, New South Wales, yes, it's um, still good, and and it's not surprising that it's up there in second although uh if you if you speak to a lot of buyers agents they'd go um hell no not not investing in in sydney that's for sure and and probably not even new south wales so uh, because the yield is just not there either so if you can get capital growth and yield in other states then that that would be their first preference and um, western australia I'm, I'm surprised it's dropped that far already it's um i think if we were talking um three to six months ago it might have been at the top of the list it's um but uh yes in the last two to three months western australia has definitely fallen off um the the top pick for for many are an investor okay so um, if you had to pick, if you had to pick just one state or territory it would be queensland but let me flip the question okay if you, sorry. Had, if you had to invest in seven states or territories which one would you exclude? Oh, good question. Good question. Sorry, it's like, yeah, dead air here. Um, I would probably exclude uh, Darwin, uh, Northern Territory. It's um, it's <laughs> it's a toss up between that and Tasmania, but um it's you know what there's some good stuff coming out of tasmania so um it's it's um out of those two it's the one place where um yeah hearing um some um, some good news good stories but unfortunately northern territory yeah not here hearing a lot and so why would you exclude the territory um it, it's it ha it had a growth stage a little while ago and um, there's oh. not a single person that I've spoken to has ever brought it up as a, a possibly a good place to invest. And from people I know of in 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 the area, um, in Darwin itself, it's um, yeah yeah it's there's no real growth prospects at this stage. Interestingly, prices peaked in 2014, so 10 years later they're actually lower than that peak. I, mm. I guess one of the challenges with the Territory, which is a fantastic part of the country, uh, the economy is not particularly diversified mm. and the population can be a bit transient. And I'm guessing also, when we were talking about supply and demand, if prices are below their 2014 peak, then I guess that would probably suggest that maybe there's been a bit of an oversupply. Yes, possibly, and um, that's that's what I've heard. So you know, it's um, yeah, maybe it's a place to 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 move to for all those people who are saying they can't afford uh, Sydney or Brisbane prices. 
or Melbourne prices. It's um, maybe it's time to move to Darwin. Well, Darwin is a beautiful city, and the <laughs> lifestyle can be fantastic. Yes, I, I I know you're a fan. It's um, so maybe we need to um, get the uh, Northern Territory uh, uh, Tourism Commission on here um, to talk about um, seeing you in the NT a bit more mm. often. Yes, can we get them to sponsor the show? Oh, you you never know. You never know. You you never never know. And uh, is <laughs> isn't that day? Um, isn't Darryl that day Summit, tag? Yes. Yes, Taking so, me back to the 1990s? Yes. Uh, well, um, Nick, maybe, maybe you should, you know, uh, next time you, you take a trip up there, see if you can make contact with, it, with anyone. Well, Get them I on the show. Will. We, we do have a massive audience, so they, they'd be foolish not to advertise here. Of course. Uh, uh, well, a massive audience that likes Darwin, at least. Well, I'm glad we had this chat, as always, Owen. I, I love hearing your thoughts, especially your analysis of of kevin bell and housing as a human right that was really interesting thanks for the chat and see you next week all right thank thank you nick uh thanks for bringing the news again and uh bringing upon challenging uh but positive comment uh positive stories to be able to discuss (laughs) 